Welcome to the all new Driving Sports TV Peninsula Proving Grounds. Today I'm going to give you a tour of our newest location, including courses and features. And I'm going to do it with this, the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness and the Polaris General 4 1000 Ultimate. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. A few years ago, we bought a hillside located in the Cascade Mountain Range, built our own roads, and started testing advanced off-roaders with steep climbs, mud, and snow. Viewers love our mountain test course, and yeah, we're going to keep it and continue to develop new roads and challenges. However, <laughs> in the spring and fall, our mountain course has proven to be too much of a challenge for production vehicles, as the rains move in and the roads get muddy, slick, and quite frankly, a little dangerous. Summers out there are amazing. Winters, when we have snow, even better. But fall and spring, they can be problematic, at least when you're trying to film a show. <laughs> the solution isn't to fix our mountain test course. Instead, we've added a new location out here on the Washington State Peninsula. This is our new playground. And we're calling it the Driving Sports TV Peninsula Proving Grounds. Here we're going to test out the latest cars, trucks, SUVs, and we're even going to test bikes and crossovers over on our Riding Sports channel. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button to both channels. The terrain here is a lot different than our mountain course. The soil is mostly sand and gravel with some dirt on the edges. This location is actually a historic gravel pit. It's not used as a pit anymore, but in the 1900s, this provided material for roads and fill in the region. We took possession of this property just a few weeks ago. However, we've already built some roads, and in fact, the easy course has appeared in a couple videos already. Today, I'm going to give you the full tour, including our easy course, what we're building for the hard courses, and what we have planned. And I'm going to start with this, the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. Under the hood is Subaru's trademark 2.5 liter boxer motor. It produces a peak 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. The transmission is a continuously variable unit with a revised 411 final drive. Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive is standard. It is enhanced with dual X mode for more challenging off-road conditions. Wheels are 17-inch alloys wrapped in Yokohama Geolanders, a mild all-terrain tire that is winter rated. Ground clearance on the Wilderness Edition is increased to 9.3 inches. Price as you see it here with optional Alpine Green Paint and Harman Kardon Sound, $35,995 US dollars, including destination. Right, let's do this. I am so excited to be able to show you around this place. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on it and uh, it's coming together. I mean, we still have a ton of work to do though. So uh, yeah, there are some piles of brush, cement, it's actually part of an old dock right over there. And we got a garbage pile in the corner um, and it's big. <laughs> we will of course tidy it up as we go. So Subaru Crosstrek, what is one thing that you think of when I say Subaru? Well, it's probably Rally Road, right? We have one of those too. Now granted, it's not very long. There is a nice road up the middle and it works pretty well as a really short rally stage. I would like to extend it in the future for some hard corners, but right now it's a short bit of fun. So this is really nice for testing suspension on a vehicle Ooh, at speed. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Nice. <laughs> and this is the entrance to our easy course. Eventually the easy course is going to carve into the forest here. This is only about a quarter of the planned trail, but I think it's a pretty good start. This is designed for kind of more pedestrian crossovers. We've already taken the Hyundai Palisade through here, the CX-90 PHEV, and then I even attempted to take the uh, Toyota Crown through here. That did not go very well, but <laughs> the Subaru should have no problem with it. I'm going to go ahead and start the climb right here. And it's a little wet today, so it might be a little slippery but these mild all-terrain tires should be just fine. 
Now, this is a challenge, this portion for some vehicles. See, we got some wheels spinning. It's fine though, Subaru. Hit X mode snow dirt, just keep the throttle in and it'll shift power around and move us forward. It's a very good system, works good. We've done so many videos on it, I don't feel I really need to like, you know, lean in too much on that. But just trust me, X mode works pretty good. Okay, now we got a little tilt coming up here. I just love this dead tree. It's like one of my favorite things here. It just has such history. And of course, it's also a home for woodpeckers. So this course is, like I said, it's an easy course. Uh, what I've done is dug out holes left to right to kind of give an undulated drive through. Uh, what that will do is in little CUVs like this or even mid-size ones, it'll lift a wheel. So it's really forced to use brake vectoring to shift power left to right. Uh, it's really not that difficult and I've made it as mild as possible uh, so that uh, even lower clearance crossovers can get through it but you'll see that we're definitely gonna be lifting some wheels through here. And it seems to be a little bit more of a challenge for smaller vehicles simply because of the geometry. Longer vehicles kind of can put their wheels in like nicer places. And we definitely have to look out for these trees. This is a very narrow corridor, um, but if we can maintain control and not slide to the side, we should be fine. Now we're gonna have the big tilt to the right. This is probably the steepest in here. Get that wheel up in the air. And then when we come back down, I'm gonna make sure that I put my driver's side wheel actually in the hole. We're now gonna lift that right wheel up. And at this point, we need to climb. So this is where, again, traction systems really come into play. See that wheel braking? Is it gonna kick in? We're still in X mode snow dirt. And it gets us through with minimal fuss. And on the exit here, we have a bit of a litmus test um, prior to going to the logs. I need to watch that tree there. A lump that has significant ground clearance. If we high center, then we can't go on to the logs. Off we go. And let's line up over here. So this part of the property is pretty interesting because it actually is sand. It's mostly sand. Uh, kind of the stuff that you would find on the beach. In fact, there's a manzanita growing right here, which would be native to a coastal environment. So what do we have? We have logs, we have rocks. In fact, I'm thinking about maybe adding some more boulders to this in time, but this is a good start, I think. Uh, what I've done is I've sunk the logs in the sand. Obviously, if I hit the logs really hard, it's going to upset them and pull them out. So I have to really crawl across this, just like you would have to do in the real world. Give it a try. I'm gonna keep snow dirt X mode on. The difference between snow dirt, which is on all Subarus equipped with X mode, and deep snow mud, which is the more advanced system, is that deep snow mud allows for additional wheel spin. On a condition like this, I want as little wheel spin as possible because I don't wanna kick boulders and logs up. It's a course like this where we could test the cameras if it had a front camera, which it doesn't, uh, but also check those clearances and also see how well it can crawl over objects. Oop. There we go. Right, moving on. And then we have a tight corner on the exit, which we need to watch for that tree. And it is a little, Bit of a tilt to get out. Okay, a little rubbing. <laughs> it's just sand, no big deal. So at this point, um, I'm gonna say that the easy course is going to be extended. This is just the first version of it. All right, we're gonna keep going this way, but uh, I need to build it. And I'm thinking about putting in like a big broad tilt through here as we then go into the forest over there. Uh, so look forward to that. Now let's move on to something a little harder. On the other side of the property, we have the hard course. This is kind of a choose your own adventure as there are a few optional challenges along the way, but they all start with this nice, rather tight drive in the forest. I'm gonna add some additional challenges in here, but I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet. Here, this would be a good opportunity again to test cameras, especially on larger vehicles where we have a much tighter fit. Get around that tree. Okay, and we're good.
Now in this section, I am planning on adding a challenge of some sort. I don't want to make it too difficult though, so I'm still trying to figure that out. That said, as the terrain continues to shift with more vehicles going over it, uh, it's possible that it just might become more challenging all by itself, especially because there's a vein of clay up here, which is kind of slippery. Oh, yeah, last time I took my truck through here, it sank about six inches. So we're just going to use gravity to pull us out. Of course, to get out of here, we have to U-turn and then go back that way. So we'll be hitting that section again. So I actually love this next little thing we're going to hit. Uh, it's a tilt. <laughs> and I'm going to keep X mode, snow dirt mode on. And we're basically just going to drive down this very steep little bank. And uh, yeah, we got to wheel up. <laughs> Over time, this is obviously going to wear down. So uh, I need to figure out a way to make this stay this extreme or maybe even punch it up just a little bit more. But good preview, right? As we go down, mostly just using gravity to go down. It just looks good. But then we do a counter tilt here, which lifts up these two wheels. And we slide on the uh, moss, which is right on top of the gravel. Because this is, if you don't recall, a sand pit. Okay, trying that tilt. How high can we go? Now this is obviously very loose. Because again, gravel pit. And it's soft on the inside. Oh, but it tests that system. Tests it pretty good. Okay, well, it's a good way of stressing the system. Now let's roll out and I'm going to show you the hardest thing that we have. So what we have here is the rock garden. And I did put... A barrier in the front of it using a big log and some of the boulders uh, to prevent even myself from thinking hey let's try to go over the rocks uh, if I didn't have a vehicle that could get over the boulders so I'm going to show you actually going over the boulders right now and why we're not taking this vehicle through the rock garden I'm gonna go ahead and line it up and get it up and over now it's not a matter of really capability it's a matter of Clearance. Uh, I am going to high center on that log. If I high center on the log, there's no way I'm going to get over the boulders. So I'm going to go ahead and back out and go grab something that can make it through. Or at least I think it can make it through. I haven't actually done it yet. This will be fun. Back through the mud. Momentum. Let's not run into the tree stumps. <laughs> Right. We got this. So that course, as you saw me take it, uh, with the exception of the rock garden, is perfect for vehicles in this category. Uh, kind of like the off-roady versions of more mainstream crossovers. So like, you know, the Compass Trailhawk, Super Wilderness line, uh, maybe the X-Pro from Kia. I mean, I don't know how well it would do, but, you know, I'd give it a try. <laughs> and we definitely would take, like, you know, the mid-sized trucks through there. Okay, now let's jump into the General. The 2023 Polaris General XP4 1000 Ultimate. In the back is a ProStar 1000 four-stroke two-cylinder with electronic fuel injection making a peak 100 horsepower. Power is sent to all four wheels with an on-demand four-wheel drive system that can be switched between two-wheel drive, single-wheel, and all-wheel setups. The transmission is an automatic PVT. The dumping box in the back can handle up to 600 pounds. This dump bed is incredibly useful. In fact, I used it quite a lot in building some of the courses here. Let's see, where does that work? There we go. I think the only thing I would have preferred to the dump bed is a power dump bed, but it's not on this. Our test unit also came with a winch that is rated at 4,500 pounds. Ground clearance, a whopping 13.5 inches. Tires are 8-ply Pro Armor Ultracross R-Specs mounted on 15-inch aluminum wheels. Shocks are Walker Evans Velocity Series with a long 14 inches of travel. 
Of course, this video is not a comparison of these two vehicles, not in any way. Uh, there's just some stuff here that's way too complicated for the Crosstrek, and I felt the General would be the best option. And I know what you're thinking too, man, this General is big. It's bigger than the Crosstrek. I mean, when you spend the amount of money on these things, you definitely get a lot of vehicle for the money. These things can do things that the Crosstrek couldn't even think about which is why we're driving it right now. Let's do this. Now the transmission of this thing is funny because, I mean, unlike a car where everything, they try to make it as smooth and quiet as possible, this, it don't care. It is rough and ready to go. Let's go into high, floor it. So I'm starting the tour um, with this vehicle over here in over in the gravel pit area. And uh, as you can tell right now, this is very gravelly and soft. Eventually we're going to smooth this out and put a building in, but that's that's still a couple years away. Let's hit the trail now. So we are going to do the rock crossing that we just attempted with the cross trek. Uh, but before I do that, there's something else I want to show you. Oh, ho, ho, that mud. Yeah, slimy. So obviously vehicles that have more capability can play with other areas that we have here. We don't have to stay on the strict trail. Like right here, hill climb. I'm going to keep it in four-wheel drive mode. I'm going to keep it in high. I'm just going to blast up it. Let's do it. Woo! <laughs> you know, I haven't gone down it. Let's see how that does. Let's do it in low so we can control. Ay, ay, ay. yi Okay, I think we need to keep momentum moving. Down we go. Yikes. That is steep and loose. So this is our little rock garden section. Basically, if you go to a serious off-road park, you're going to have to get through um, typically some kind of gatekeeper. That is what we have here. So it's a good kind of replication of what we would find on one of those type of uh, environments. And I've made it a little bit more interesting by adding a log with the crossing and then some tilts before we get to the actual rocks. I have not actually driven through this all the way yet, so it'll be interesting. Because this vehicle has so much ground clearance, you're looking at over 13 inches of ground clearance, um, that should make it a little bit easier, uh, or at least a little bit safer. Now I'm going to do it in low, so I can kind of crawl through it. There's nothing else really to do. I'm not going to worry about high centering here, we should have no problem. Let's add a little power, we're good. Okay, now let's hit the rocks. Rocks can be measured multiple ways. Uh, these are, are referred to as one-man rocks. That is in, one man can physically move them. That means that these are all uh, about yay big and they will weigh up to about 300 pounds, roughly. Uh, many are smaller than that, of course. So uh, nothing to really do here. I'm just gonna keep it in low and we're gonna try to crawl over without breaking anything very happy to try this in the side-by-side -side before taking a regular production truck over it. Oh yeah, ooh, tilty. Now of course the side-by-side -side makes it look easy because it is with this. Let's go the other way, see how that goes. Okay, we're low, four-wheel drive. Sure we're gonna get some shifting. But with this, it just doesn't care. We got underbody protection, we got four wheel drive, and we got loads of clearances in the front, back, and brake over. Oh yeah, making it easy. Ah! Now once we start taking production trucks and SUVs over that, it's not gonna look that easy. Actually, this corner right here is really good for testing uh, turning radius. Small vehicles can turn it, no problem. Even this vehicle, yeah, you gotta stop and reset. Woo! Back to high, through the mud. 
It's like a tiny trophy truck. So obviously we're not gonna be doing a ton of side-by-side -side reviews, but as you can see, we really have the type of site where we can test anything. Now, of course, something like this really makes production trucks look not nearly as capable, but it's okay. Different vehicles for different uses. Woo! You know, I've really loved driving this Polaris. It's just been so much fun. Let's try a full send up the hill. Right here and go. Woo! <laughs> So that's a first look at the new Driving Sports TV Peninsula Proving Grounds. We obviously have a lot more work to do, adding more courses, more challenges, heck, we might even add a barn. Three, two, one. It's been a very exciting 17 years of Driving Sports TV here on YouTube. But I think it's safe to say that 2024 is shaping up to be our best year ever. And thank you for coming along on this ride. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here real soon.